We are once again on the beautiful map Forts of Eisen on the patch 1.06. We have the purple Isengard player China facing against the great Gonzo player Stevie. In the El Clasico matchup, Good versus Evil. The Gonzo player is also on host, which needs to be. Actually, no. Gonda is off host in this game, which is quite impressive. Because normally, it's a very tough matchup for Gonzo if Isengard is on host, since Isengard will have an easy time microing those pikemen around, and Gonda will have a harder time because off host delay is one of the biggest problems actually in this game. And Gondo is leading to the middle. He's also building a farm number 3, very interesting opening for the Gonzo player. Normally we always see blacksmiths. This way you can get your upgrades a bit cheaper, since blacksmiths need to hit level 2 before you can purchase the upgrades. And Urukai are very very strong, but it's good for Gondo that Isengard was actually looking for the bottom right side. So with that he was able to buy some time. Alvin Wood will be used immediately. That's gonna nullify the enemy leadership bonuses from the war chant. So Elvin Wood works basically like a, like a freezing rain on terrain, you know? On the Elvin Wood, the enemy units have no buff and no leadership, while your units will have armor buff, 40%. That's gonna make those soldiers stronger than Urukai in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But he was able to deal some damage, and he needs to take the fight regardless. He doesn't want, and he shouldn't, let the Gondo soldiers reach the Lamry Mill to take it down. The good thing is, Isengard will get more and more units on the field, and eventually he will be able slowly but surely taking down those soldiers. In the meantime, Peregrine took the Hobbit from the Gondor player Stevie, was able to capture this farm, and also this farm right after. Three farms inside, two outside, that's gonna give a discount of 25% for the Gondor Knights. But once again, not starting with the blacksmith inside the base, is gonna delay your upgrade, like Forge Blades, Heavy Armor and Banner won't be able to be purchased anytime soon for the Gondor player Stevie. But the mill is gonna be protected regardless. The soldiers are almost gone. He's ACing, you see. Like, uh, Isengard is not able to attack back. Only the Lumber Mill Walker is able to attack. But it's a matter of time and Isengard will be able to defend himself regardless. And now he needs to try to deal some economical damage to the Gonza player by taking down his farms. Gonda is saving for his stable. He has almost the money. 800 is needed. Now he has the money. And Stevie is cash floating a bit, but it's fine. I mean, it's not fine actually. Cash looting is the worst thing what you can do. Stable is coming up now. The, go the soldiers are dead. And now Isengard can choose either to creep the work layer or to destroy as many farms as he potentially can. And both are very strong options. I personally, when you know it's a bit delayed now, just go and creep as much as you potentially can because that's what you, ne what you need to do in order to deny your opponent Gondor to get the power points for the Elven Alliance summon which can be quite hard to deal with for the Isengard, because Elven allies can be very strong against pikemen, which is going to be your primary unit to be able to fight for the map control against the Gondor Knights. One more Urukai is needed, then the Urukpil is going to hit level 2, and that's going to give you the chance to not only recruit the pikemen, but also berserkers. The farm is going to be eventually taken down, maybe not. Gondor Knights, they should be. Never mind, they won't be there on the, uh, in time. Where is the Hobbit, actually? Hobbit is in the middle, trying to deal some damage to the Urukai, and he will potentially end up losing both the farms. Which is kinda, you know, double-edged sword. It's not bad. It's not horrible, I guess. It's bad. But on the other side, Gondor will have the chance to creep as many war players as possible. Once again, that's very important in this matchup for Gondor. Especially when you are being off -host. The Hobbit was not able to get cloaked. Why? Because Urukai are just too fast. And also Isengard is on host. So the micro from the Hobbit is not gonna be the greatest. Warchan is available for the Isengard player. He might try to creep the work player. That's gonna be also his plan. This farm has been taken down. This farm is also gonna go down. And Gondor Knights, they need to first of all take care of these Urukai. Which is gonna be not bad because he will be able to get some more AXP on the Gondor Knights. They're gonna hit eventually level 2. And also, he will get closer and closer for the Elven Allies summon. In this matchup, Gondor normally skips the heal from the spellbook and tries to reach to 3 power points right after the Elvin Wood. And he's sacrificing his Urukai, he doesn't want them to be killed from the soldier, from the Gondor Knights. The creep is gonna be secured definitely by the Isengard player, he will get some money, and also the chance to capture yet another Lamry Mill, which is giving you the Wood bonus, that's gonna make your buildings inside your base a bit cheaper. Hobbit is back on the menu, Pike's already in the front of the gate to be annoying, Gondor soldiers or Gondor knights, they are just recapturing those farms. Okay, 
So the plan is to build a well after the second Gundanite. The well is needed for the Sustain, because you will keep fighting all the time, and you will be forced to go back to your base, heal up. And he will try to creep this Forklinger. After seeing the Alvin Wood, maybe Isengard should be just sending a Pikeman to this spot, but I think it's gonna be just too late. The Pikes are disengaging, running away from the Hobbit, of course. But the Hobbit has to be careful. Pikes are gonna kill him in no time. He was able to get cloaked just in time. Isengard in the meantime is gonna be able to get a full base eventually, very, very soon. And again, you know, primary resource or, you know, unit type is your Pikeman from the Uruk Pits level 2. And also that's gonna be the, your most important structure inside your base. Which you should be protecting by getting one or two towers up on the field. Because losing the Uruk Pit is gonna be the worst case scenario for the Isengard. That's gonna slow you down. Because once again, the Uruk Pit has to be level 2, and unlike in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King, you can't buy level 2 upgrade on your buildings. You need to do that manually by spamming units on the field all the time. Industry has been used on the 3 furnaces. Now these 3 furnaces are gonna act like 6 furnaces in total, because that's a boost of 100% resources for each furnace inside the base. The mill has been taken down. Gondo is doing not a bad job. Keeping those Gondo Knights alive is very important. That was pretty close, actually. He almost lost that. Also pretty delayed well. And once again... Oh, he's building the barracks. But that's what I'm trying to say. You see the level of the blacksmiths? So he needs now much longer time to get them to level 2. And he has also only 3 blacksmiths. That's gonna make only a discount of 15%. And you will need 60. Because look at how expensive those uh, upgrades are. You see that? You can get them... To 360 only by having six or more furnaces or blacksmiths inside your base. From the, pits. from the pits. Okay, so Warden has been used. He's gonna split the pikemen to creep both the work layers at the same time, bottom left and bottom right. Base is looking good. He's spamming more and more pikemen all the time, you see. There is not a single moment in which he doesn't have at least one pike queued up inside the Uruk pit. He has also a great amount of map control. He's gonna get even more and more money eventually. From creeping this Vorklinger. At the bottom left, bottom right. Gondo is gonna try to steal that. Smart move from Isengard to not risk the 50-50 situation. And chasing down those Gondo Knights is the best thing you can do. Gondo Knights, they are dancing around the rosy, but that's fine. Because during all this time, Isengard's economy is untouched. Isengard is gonna shine bright like a diamond in the mid to late game. Oh, he will get the last hit on the Leador. Can he get the money too? That's the question. He will at least get one part of the money. So it's a 50-50. And he was able to get the last hit. And look, his power points are almost two now. He was also creeping this one. Getting the money. And he has now full base. Soldiers are a great counter to the pikemen. And looks like China is not paying attention. He will be feeding those soldiers with additional power points. And, you know, experience points. And that's gonna force the Isengard player China to build now a warp pit inside the base. It's a counter unit to the soldiers. Otherwise, you will be eventually losing the entire map control to the soldiers all alone. So pretty basic, pikes are good only against uh, calf, against Gondon Eyes, but they are weak against anything else. Like, even peasants are able to kill them in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Okay, so two power points almost collected. He still needs one more. The stable is level 2. He has enough money for the Night Shield, which is gonna give him the chance to increase the durability of the Gondon Eyes in big time, to make them extremely tanky against arrows. And that's gonna give you the chance to rush the Isengard base, who has only two towers inside the base, and that's not gonna be enough to burst down those Gondor Knights fast enough. Hey Flo, thanks for the follow on the Twitch channel, appreciate that. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. The Pikes are getting bullied, and China now has to be extremely careful. Look, he has many, many soldiers up on the fields now, and if China doesn't pay attention, he will be losing every single Pikeman, one by one, and the power points are rising, skyrocketing. Be careful with the Gondor Knights! Oh, be careful! He was able to get the money, don't run into them. He will be able to save the level 3. Levels are extremely important in battle for middle of one, guys. Almost 3 power points collected. Like a quarter away from getting the Alvin Ally summon unlocked. And Isengard doesn't have the best time of his life. He has not enough money for the, uh, for the Lourdes, for the Saruman, or for the upgrades from the Armory. So he has to play a bit more defensively. And has to make sure to kill the soldiers one by one with the war riders. Shields purchased. And if you can combine the rush, oh, he's gonna use the Alvin Wood for the third time. That is one. And Alvin Wood is permanent in Battle for Middle Earth 1. 
and can will be staying there for the entire game unless Isengard is gonna choose to use the Tainted Land to cover this, you know? And he doesn't have the power points in it yet. He will need three power points for that. Look, he's feeding now. Oh, yeah, he's gonna lose this fight. Almost level two. Level two is a huge power spike, and that's the first rush happening now. Many, many pikemen. He's gonna trample down those Uruks. Get the level three gun tonight. This one is only level one, but it's fine. And Elven allies special summon now to kill the pikemen. Forge fleets getting purchased too. The blacksmith is finally level two. And he has also more soldiers coming, I'm assuming. Nope, that's not being the case. But that's what you need to do. While you are rushing the Isengard base, that's gonna draw his attention, right? He has to defend himself eventually. Then, that's gonna be the time for you to send your soldiers out to the settlements and kill the pikemen. Because he won't be able to watch and pay attention to every single spot all the time. Power points are now three. Isengard has the chance to pick the Tainted Land and cover the next Elven Wood. Uh, but it's a bad spot. He lost one Gondonite, if I'm not mistaken. The other one is also badly damaged. And that's a... You see this placement of the... He's gonna use heal. But the towers are coming up. And, uh, you know, the Gondonites are badly damaged. I believe they will be forced to get away. And the Alvin ally summon wasn't the uh, most successful because of the placement. But it's fine. He was covering one of the Alvin woods on the ground with his Tainted Land. I think there is only one, two... Mills outside, three mills outside. And with the Warcriders, he has to fight for the map control. He keeps rushing, and Isengard is not demolishing the towers in time, which is gonna give you a huge boost of experience and power points for the Gonza player. He has a lot of Gonza Knights on the field. You can always send a couple of them back for recovering, and the other ones can keep pressuring all the time, you know? Okay? Some Uruk pikemen have risen from the pit! Some Urukai. He's demolishing one of the furnaces to build the armory, if I'm not mistaken. He has almost the money. 1200 is needed for the armory. But the problem is, he keeps losing those mills all the time just because of the Gondor soldier start. Very, very smart play here from the Gondor Players TV. And I need to add and once again mention that Gondor Players TV is off host, which is making this matchup way, way harder. Because he's the one with the Gondor Knights and the micro advantage needed needs to be on the side from Gondor, but it isn't. You know, China is host. That means normally Isengard has like 70% chance of winning this matchup. But he's playing a bit sloppy. He was feeding a lot of pikemen to the Gondor player. Gondor player's TV is doing a phenomenal job keeping his Gondor Knights alive all the time. Very important. Because they are extremely expensive when you buy all the upgrades on them like he did. Forge plates, heavy armor and night shields, everything is purchased. And with these upgrades, you can even fight in a one-on-one -on -one situation against unupgraded uh, pikemen, you know? That's also possible. We might also see Gandalf eventually. Oh, you see? Soldiers with blades. They can also... Oh, he has armor, right? No, he doesn't have anything on the soldiers yet. What Gondor can always do is make a group of tower guards and soldiers. And this way, the war gliders can't deal with them anymore. Tower guards are, of course, great counter. Oh, be careful with the pikemen. Level 5 Gondor Knight, you see? Level 5 is hitting like a truck, but that's a bad positioning. He has to escape now and save the level 5. Very important. But that's fine for Isengard. Now he has time to recover a little bit, you know? He has now almost the money he needs for the Forge Blades. In this matchup, you don't need Fire Arrow early on. You know, when you have not money, just skip the Fire Arrow, buy these 3 upgrades and demolish that later on. The only reason why you would ever need Fire Arrow in this matchup is to deal with the Eagles later on. But you don't even need to make combos until eagles appear, you know, from the spellbook of Gondor. You can just make pikemen and soldiers, uh, Urukai, and spam them on the field. And eventually you will be able to win this matchup. As Isengard, you want to win this matchup ASAP. For that reason, capture this outpost, for example, at the bottom left side. Make siege works. Go for the siege ladders or rams. Break the wall or climb the wall and get inside the jeans. That should be your primary goal. But he's putting pressure now with the... Pikes inside the base, trying to escape. Oh, he's trampling down a lot of them. He lost a full battalion of Gondor Knights, by the way. That's very unlucky. He might even go for the heavy armor to make them even a bit tankier. He was able to save. But look at the minimap in the meantime. Do you see that? The full map is purple now. Because Gondor is forced to deal with the one pikeman in front of his gate. Just build a post and gate in this kind of situations. It's going to cost you only 300. And you don't have to wait until the pikes are gone. You know what I'm saying? Also, Heavy Armor is getting purchased on this Gondor Soldiers. Level 2 now. Forge Bleeds as well. 
and that's gonna make them one shot those pikes in no time. Isengard has purchased already the heavy armor and the banner is incoming as well. With this many mills outside, he will also have money for forge blades and even fire arrow, fire arrow upgrades in no time. And with 6 power points, in this matchup you can actually skip um, freezing rain. You don't need freezing rain against Gondor that much. You can skip that and go for the fuel the fires instead. That's gonna double your resource income from the Lammer mills. And long story short, you will grow rich guys. Like rich you're rich, you will have no money problems whatsoever, you know? Bad fight to take for the Gondor Knights. They are badly damaged. And that's the plan. You see? 100% resources from harvesting trees. The money is gonna skyrocket now. Like, you will get so rich. <laughs> that's gonna be incredible. Trust me on that one. You can get a full army, every upgrade, and even Saruman and loot at pretty much the same time. That's the power of industry from Isengard. Isengard is a very eco-based faction with devastation with fuel the fires with the industry you can actually boost your resource income dramatically has the best eco in the game by far and you have also pillage from lords which means money 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 every time you kill enemy units so overall very very strong faction in terms of eco which you also need because you have really expensive upgrades and expensive units and keep in mind that isengard is also the least heroes in battle for middle earth one with only lords and saruman Every other faction, Gonzo, Mordo, and Rohan have way more heroes. Be careful with the Walk Riders. They can't fight against the mighty Tower Guards. Tower Guards are not the best units, uh, but they are extremely tanky. Their weakness is the lack of mobility. They are quite slow in compared to the Uruk Pikemen, for example. Uruk Pikemen are way stronger than them. Also, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, Uruk Pikemen are stronger than Tower Guards. Okay, but on the bright side, the tower guards are definitely tankier against anything else, like for example, fire. Alvin allies will be summoned once again. Gondor knights are badly damaged, but he's trying to go for a rush anyway. Does he have heal from the spellbook? The answer is yes, it will be used now. Tower is going down, getting demolished. And that's the thing, you know, if you can take down the Uruk, that's gonna be a huge achievement. It means no more pikemen any soon. And the pikes can't get nearby because of the Alvin allies, and the Uruk is going down indeed. It's a very, very good rush from the Gondor player's TV. That's gonna buy him so much time now. Because now he knows that Isengard can't produce any more pikemen any soon. And he has not... I mean, he has still many, many pikemen up on the field. But he needs to also make sure to keep a couple of them inside the base, you know? For some protection. Level 6, Gondor Knight is getting in safety. The other one is almost level 4. Getting to the corner. Remember, everything which is level 2 or higher will be respawning and recovering over time automatically. And soldier tower guard combination, like I said before. The money from Gondor is not look, looking that good because he keeps spamming Gondor knights on the field all the time. And even more and more units. Like, he's not going for the heroes like Faramir, Boromir, or Gandalf. But he might eventually be forced in order to be able to win this game. However, by skipping the Gandalf the White Power Point from the spellbook, you can actually reach the, the uh, Eagle Allies summon a bit faster. Eagle Allies is the best non ultimate summon in the game. After Balrog and Army of the Dead, it's just glorious, you know? You can kill heroes, pikes, buildings, everything in a couple of seconds. And I think that there's no pikemen or no archers on the field yet. He's only building the Vork Pit. The Gondor Knights are still around this area, healing up over time. And don't feed too much anymore. Don't feed. This way. So Tower Guards, Gondor Soldiers, Tower Guards, Gondor Soldiers, very very strong combination and there is one way you can deal with them and the way is you can combine your Urukai with Pikemen and then you can fight them. It's a very underrated combination. I mean that's a bad fight to take for Isengard because he has well behind, right? So he can always go back, recover and then attack again. But he's keeping him busy at least, that's good. You have three farms only for the Gondor player, Stevie. And all the other settlements are still under control from the Isengard player. And once again, with the field of fires, he's gonna have so much money. He might... Oh, look, look at this. The <laughs> uh, the Gondor Knights are getting inside the jeans one more time. They are badly damaged. Level 6 though, almost level 7. The Vorks are dying one by one. They have no chance. In long terms, Gondor Knights and Rohirrim are way, way stronger than the Vork Riders. Because they have no chance of getting shields, you know? Unlike Rohirrim and Gondor Knights. That's gonna make them also very weak against fire. They're only good early mid game, and also only good against swordsmen. But they shouldn't be the main primary army, you know? 
And he's gonna do that over and over again. Look, he's gonna go back, heal up over time, and go attack. Warchan has been used. Elvin Wood has been used. Tainted Land is on cooldown. Can't be used for covering this. So, Warchan is meaningless. Once again, Elvin Wood is able to nullify the leadership bonuses from anything. Heal has been used on this Gunner Knights. They are fighting against a Pikeman. But is it really necessary, though? I don't think it's necessary because he might still lose his fight. Pikes are, of course, one of the best counters. Level 5 Pikemen are hitting like a truck. And it's a 2v1 situation. Yeah, he will be able to deal with them. But he lost almost all his Gunner Knights. I think it's not worth it. Because now he has to go back anyway. The only good thing is, he's only one power point away from the Eagle Summon. And the Eagle Summon can be game-changing, game guys. Trust me on that one. Isengard needs around 15 and a half power points for the Balrog Summon. Balrog Summon is also game-winning because it's able to one-shot the entire Gondor Castle by himself. It's a very interesting Gondor gameplay, though. Not going for the heroes, spamming units all the time. Vision of Palantir will be used to see what's going on. And also, Vision of Palantir is going to make your Warc Riders a bit faster. I think he was using that on the Warc Riders to be able to chase down Gondor Knights. You see, they are faster than Gondor Knights. In CV, the Gondor player has to now micro around. And he will be able to get in safety. But Isengard needs Uruk Pit. He also needs to purchase this outpost eventually. And once again, in order to be able to fight against the Tower Guard Soldier combination, you need to either make combos or you need to combine your Uruks with your Pikemen. That's the only possible way. It's nice, Mon. He was able to kill the soldiers. Very good. Just run away from the tower guards. Don't run into them. Back in fourth game. But there is currently no pressure on the Gondor player. It means as long as there are no siege weapons coming up. Because that's what you need in order to be able to break through the wall and the gate. Uh, you need siege weapons. If you don't... Gondor can just keep doing what he's doing, eventually fish some more power points and get to the point in which he can be unstoppable, you know? Gondor is very strong, the best summons in the game. Alvin allies, Eagles, Rohirrim, AOD can be almost impossible for Isengard to deal with. More soldiers, more Gondor knights, he's spamming them all the time. And watch this, the combination is very strong, you know? Tower guard, soldiers. Oh, Saruman is on the field. Now, that, that's going to be a different story. Because Saruman can one-shot them. The Fireball eventually. Or Visa Blast. Eagle Summon. Oh, oh my goodness. Saruman the White. He's going to be Saruman the Dead. Oh, he's going to die. You Watch now. You see this one hit from each Eagle. And he's almost getting one-shotted. Boom. You get, a, you get a full power point for killing Saruman. And the Eagles can now do whatever, you know. I would use them for the map control fights. There are so many pikes around the base, around the map, I mean, which are unprotected. And instead of going for the base, which is going to cause you to take damage, Fire Arrow, for example, very vulnerable against Fire and against Archers. One of the Eagles is going down for sure. Lourdes is also here. The rush is happening. There are no pikemen inside the base yet. The Uruk is not even level 2. This might be a very, very hard rush to defend. One of the Eagles is going to get killed. The other one is also down. Lourdes is only level 1. And, but there is nothing to stop those Gondor Knights. Trust me on that one. He has to move now with the Pikemen inside the base. He has to make a move. But the second they move, they, get, they will also get bullied by this Elven allies. The Gondor Knights are almost invulnerable against Archers because they are highly leveled. They have full upgrades. Night Shield and Heavy Armor is able to stack with each other. Which makes your Gondor Knights extremely tanky against arrows. From the buildings especially. The level 3 furnace is eventually going down. Lourdes has to be careful, he's only level 1. Level 3 is needed for the power spike of the Carnage. But level 3 furnaces, if you lose them, you can't replace them. It takes ages for your furnace to hit from level 1 to level 3. Level 1 is squishier and gives you also less resources. Money is not a problem for the Isengard though. Look his money, he has almost 5000 and Saruman is already reviving. But what he needs are units. And when you have this much resource income... You can easily build up to two, even three Uruk pits at the same time. And what Isengard can always do is feed to win. And with that, I mean, you can just feed as many Gond uh, pikemen as possible. And Isengard or evil factions generally, they get also power points when they lose stuff. Like when you lose Saruman, Lourdes or any unit, you will also get passively power points collected. And you can, you can do that by unlocking the Balrog summon a bit faster. Remember, Army of the Dead is good against units, but Balrog is MVP against buildings. And your goal is to kill, of course, the Gondor Castle. 
Talking about Army of the Dead, Gondor player is only 6 power points and a quarter away from getting the Army of the Dead summon unlocked from the Spellbook of Gondor. And he's doing a phenomenal job in the meantime, fighting for the map control while putting pressure on the enemy base. Remember he was able to kill Saruman, level 3 furnace, and also the front one, so he has only one, um, one single level 3 furnace. He's gonna have 3 now eventually, they're gonna hit almost level 3. But also Gondo is reclaiming the map control. Isengard has right now not a single, not a single mill outside. That's impressive. Very well done here. And again, I need to mention that Gondo is off host, guys. What a fantastic performance from the Gonzo player. Shows you that you can I'm even different. beat experts with a different strategy. Because I personally see always Gandalf, and Gandalf is kind of like a double-edged sword, you know. Gandalf can be extremely nice in this matchup, but it's a huge investment of 6,002 power points. And once you get crippled down from Lourdes, it's over for you, because Gandalf is extremely squishy and will 100% die if he's getting crippled down. While spamming those units all the time, it's gonna make you able to fight for the map control, you know? And map control is everything, trust me on that one. Lourdes is level 2. And he's getting more and more Gondor Knights on the field. Farm is, Farm is ready. Look at the tower. Look at this combination. Pikes, they need to move now to protect the crossbowman and Uruk combo. Yeah, run, 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 run. Get, get into position. Oh, not, not good positioning. Oh, he's gonna get a trample off, right? Oh, but there is Saruman back on the on the field. Fireball then maybe. Saruman. Fireball is gonna be used, indeed. Lourdes was able to get experience. He's level 3 now. That means he has access to the Carnage with his sword. In once level 5, he will also provide leadership for the nearby allied units by 60% damage. That's a lot. And remember also Saruman gives you leadership. Only armor and combat experience, but it's good because Saruman and Lourdes and Warchan are able to stack with each other. This way you can have 80% more armor and 110% more damage and 100% more combat experience. So you can, long story short, get your combos, pikemen or whatever, hit like a truck. But, you know, it's becoming scary for Isengard because Gondo is really close for the army of the dead. And the fact that Isengard has no siege weapons on the field yet is gonna give Gondo enough chance to eventually be able to unlock the power points he needs. Which is gonna give you the chance to run them down. You can kill lords and every single unit, including Saruman, in literally two seconds when you ever summon army of the dead. And, yeah, he also has to make something happen about the map control. Like, either make more combos or finally start combining your Uruks with your pikemen. You know, the thing is that one Uruk is able to win this fight. Because, but, but the problem is, when you send one Uruk, he's gonna send one Gondor Knight, and Gondor Knights are gonna kill the Uruks in no time. And for that reason, you need to make something which is gonna be good against the pikemen, soldiers, and against Gondor Knights at the same time. And this is the combination of Uruks and pikemen. They are extremely strong, trust me. And super underrated. Fireball is available, can be just used on the Sour Guards, no problem. Oh, but he's on the Alvin Wood. He was able to get one of the level uh, 8 combo, or horses, rather. Fireball. Now send him to your base. I think that's the best thing. Or run into the pikeman. Yeah, he's running into the pikeman. I like that. Just run one more time into the pikeman. Kill the Gondor Knights level 8 this way. Yeah, he lost the level 8 Gondor Knight. He will be also losing this area. But Eagle Summon once again, he's on the Alvin Wood. Remember, he has no leadership here. If he loses Saruman and Lourdes, I believe that's going to be definitely the case. <laughs> Gondor will have almost the army of the dead. Saruman is getting killed in no time. And look, the power points are rising, skyrocketing, guys. Now kill just Lourdes, and that's all you got to do. And now Gondor only needs two more power points. And Isengard also needs only five power points. But you, you will see now, he's going to get also power points from losing stuff. Watch. You see, every time he's losing units, he's also getting power points from that. But Gondor, of course, getting a bit more than that. And Gondor is only one and a half power point away, guys, from getting the army of the dead. The game winning, the ultimate spell from the good factions, Gondor and Rohan, in the game. And not as effective against Mordor, but very effective against Isengard. Especially now, because he has only infantry units. That means you can't run. Army of the dead is able to outrun every single infantry unit or hero. But when you have calf units like Gondor Knights, for example, or War Riders, or even mounted heroes like Theodian, Eomir, Gandalf, and so on, they can always disengage. Okay, so the pressure is real. No Gandalf all game long. 
I'm assuming he's also not gonna go for Gandalf in it anytime soon. He shouldn't, because investing two power points is gonna slow you down, and that's gonna delay your army after that eventually. When you are this close, don't go for Gandalf the White anymore. Just try to get the power points unlocked you need to be able to summon the army after that, which can give you the game-winning opportunity. Because the thing you need to do is summon army after that right here. They are invulnerable against archers or anything that shoots them down. You can kill everything and make them tank the arrows around the base. Then you go with the Gondor Knights inside. And the thing is, the army of the dead summon is going to give you also so many power points, right? So you, sum you summon army of the dead, basically. You kill everything, you get power points for free. And then you will have also 100% the chance to be able to summon the Rohirrim, which means three more calf units to deal economical damage. And eventually be enough to take down the entire Isengard beast. But be careful, don't feed Isengard too much. Because he's also really close for the Balrog summon. Balrog once again is able to one-shot the entire Gondor castle himself. Industry is available, Isengard is actually poor. He's down a lot because he keeps losing stuff all the time. He has to revive his Saruman, which is gonna cost him 2200. He was forced to revive Lourdes. He's forced to make more units, upgrade them. And once again, that's very, very costly, you know? And he has zero farms outside. Gondor managed to get full map control. That's impressive and super rare in this matchup. Very well played from Stevie in this game. But once again, he has no outpost control and Balrog is able to win the game solo. Because the way it works in BFM1, regardless how much money you have, regardless how many units you have, if you lose your castle and you have no outpost or no camp under your control, you will lose the game. And Isengard needs only 3.5 power points, and Gondor needs a quarter, a bit more than a quarter, for the army after that summon. Oh, that's gonna be absolute fiesta, trust me on that one. Okay, so, I cannot believe that, dude, what an interesting gameplay. No Gandalf is needed. No Gandalf, no heroes. Oh, he's using the cripple ability to kill the Gondor Knights, but they don't even die. Heal has been used. Lourdes is only level 4 still, level 5 is needed once again to be... Providing leadership to the nearby allied units. He is looking for a chance to get into the melee fight. Power points are now there for the army of the dead summon. And it's going to be used immediately. But look, look Isengard now. You see Isengard's pow power points are rising to the sky. As he's losing stuff. You will see what happens when he loses Lourdes. Like he's killing nothing in this mo at this point, right? But once Lourdes is dead. And the Warcriders are... Look, you see power points... He's getting so much value of losing that. If he loses Saruman, he's also gonna get a lot of power points. So just take a look into the power points. Fireball! I think if he's losing the Lourdes and Saruman, look what's, ha what's gonna happen when he loses Saruman, guys. Please. Saruman can also kill them with the Visa Blast, by the way, if you don't know. But <laughs> he's not able to hit. Look. Boom. He got over a power point for killing... For, you know, losing Saruman. Now here's the Balrog. Vision of Palantir can be used to get the vision you need to be able to summon the Balrog. The base is under attack. The fortress has been taken down. But Gondor was able to purchase this outpost already, which means even if he loses the castle, he will not be defeated. I think Gondor knows what's going on, and he will be putting those ranges inside the jeans once purchasing this. Palantir has been used. The Balrog, ladies and gentlemen, is getting summoned now. And... The, thing you, you, the way you want to handle this situation is you want to fly and before you land you want to use Ignite. Now you need to use Ignite to save the time of your animation. He's, he just lost 5 seconds and the time is very important because your time is quite limited. Isengard base is still standing. This outpost is going to be taken down but he has still this outpost. Keep that place in mind. He has full map control. He has enough money for rebuying the fortress. Beautiful breath fire to kill 5 buildings in the front. Arches can't hurt him. Only army of the dead or spell damage can hurt him. With spell damage, I mean, of course, heroes like Saruman, Gandalf especially. Eagles can hurt him as well. As well as Aragorn. But that's it. No combos, no units besides explosive mines can hurt him either. Explosive mine actually hitting like a truck. Three explosive mines are enough to kill Balrog from 100 to 0. The base is gonna fall definitely. But him having the outpost at the bottom left side is gonna keep him alive. And once again, he's, he has enough money to rebuy the base, you know? In Gondor, what a, what a game, dude. Like, it's so close. Gondor lost the base. But the outpost is the only reason 
But he's alive. Look at the range of damage inside the jeans. Just don't buy the base and get Gandalf. But he's gonna buy the base anyway. And now we have reached a milestone for the Gondor faction. In which you have three summons. Four summons actually, including the army after that. And you can summon them every time. You know, every couple of minutes you get the chance to summon them again. And that's gonna give you a huge advantage against the evil factions. Which have no summons beside Balrog, you know? Like eagles, very powerful. Double outpost, one main base. Isengard is down a lot. Let me check the money from Isengard. I mean, he has 51 resources. Like, that's... Bad. He has not even the money he needs to revive his Saruman. He has no units. No pikemen. Nothing to keep him alive. And unbelievable. But Gonzo player Stevie will be able to win this game. Of host against Isengard player China. These two players, they have expert statues, guys, in gameplays.org. They are definitely two of the best players of this game. What a phenomenal performance from the Gonzo player. Very interesting gameplay. No heroes are needed. Power points, Gondo Knight spam, especially the Tower Guard, Soldier combination, was the key to victory in this game. Game is over. China has been defeated. And phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal game. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.